Hey guys, Big HD here. I wasn't really sure when to do this video, but I, I figured better time as any. Uh, this video, I wanted to explain how uh, I got this little job behind the scenes that I've been working on. And I've been a radio correspondent for these uh, anime and comic con conventions here in Caracas, Venezuela. For those who have been following me on social media, I've actually been going to actual comic con conventions, as you can see here. Yes, outside of the US, there are also comic cons. And it's been a blast so far. I've actually been to three events, believe it or not. Originally, I would only go like every once in a blue moon as a fan. But ever since I got this uh, this job as a radio correspondent, I have went there more times than I ever imagined. To me, this is like going to a theme park. This is like going to Disney World. I should point out, I've been going to Comic Cons, I think about as far back as 2013. The first time I went, I actually took a photo with Walter Jones, the original... Uh, Black Ranger for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and I usually hung around a lot with with a friend here and there just to go to these events but I never expected to go like almost regularly in a year so this is a uh, kind of a blessing in a way for context as to how I got this job my sister actually works with this friend that's in the radio station and she had this radio blog for like two days a week and it all kind of started when they were doing this interview with this guy from the star wars fan club how he was telling his story about how he became one of the first cosplayers like in the star wars fandom before cosplaying was a thing how he eventually founded uh, the whole fan club here uh, along with other friends how he got his approval and blessing with george lucas that was pretty fun just hearing that. I was brought into the whole conversation because my sister and the, and the host of this radio show, they had very little knowledge of Star Wars. They, they kind of knew bits and pieces here and there, but I had kind of like a general idea based on the original movies, practically let's say the, the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, and yes, even the controversial sequel trilogy. We had this conversation on the radio and the, the guy even brought in uh, someone cosplaying as Darth Vader with the actual respirator sounds, like the the uh, the heavy breathing sounds, which was just a, a very neat touch. I mean, the sound was just so overwhelming. It was also kind of interfering with the, uh, the radio interview. Generally, the whole thing was uh, was a lot of fun, and it was a blast. And eventually, they uh, decided to get in contact with me to uh, do the whole uh, Comic Con event. And of course, I accepted. Of course, I, I'll go. No problem. I love to go to these events. Just seeing all these fans, all these people dress up as your favorite characters. It's no different than seeing uh, someone dress up as a Disney princess or, or seeing someone dress up from Toy Story or, or, or Monsters, Inc. or whatever. So this is actually a, a lot of fun to, to witness. And seeing how they were like these anime conventions here and there, there was this one that was not exactly the Comic-Con, but it was a spin-off of the Comic-Con called Anime XP, which is pretty much the same thing as a Comic-Con, but with a different coat of paint. It was more anime-focused, despite the fact that I did see a lot of people dressed up as either uh, Marvel characters, DC characters. There was one person dressed up as Michael Jackson, like from Thriller, uh, which was pretty funny just seeing that. And this was like around the carnival season. The first time I went, I got in as a with a, with a press pass. So basically, I could go in during those days that the event was available. And out of those three days, I only went to two. I, I couldn't go to the third one. Uh, the whole place is a lot of fun. Uh, you get to see a lot of booths, a lot of tables usually selling um, a lot of merchandise based on anime. It could be either uh, manga, toys, models, necklaces, bracelets, or it could be musical instruments. Because there was this one instance, I was actually recording all the footage of, of all the stuff that was inside this locale. I saw this guy who was selling a bunch of Zelda related merchandise, and then he started playing his uh, ocarina and he was playing i think of the song of time and he was playing probably uh not, not sure if it was epona's song or if it was something else but yeah he, he was playing the song of time and that kind of caught my attention and eventually interviewed him and he told me all the stuff that he had on sale and he had like these beautiful ocarinas there were like six whole ocarinas and then we had like the ten whole ocarinas i think some of them were probably like four whole ocarinas they were pretty small and they actually do work. Now, uh, the funny thing is that I did manage to get myself an ocarina, but this was during the second event. And this is the six flute ocarina. This thing's amazing. And this thing is very fragile, so you have to be very careful with this. I'll have to zoom in on the camera here. See, that's the uh, potato flute ocarina. Six holes. So it's actually a neat little memento that I got from one of the anime conventions. This was in the second one. It's usually the same people that they, they bring in every now and then. So let me just clear, back things up a little bit. Uh, there were three events. The first one was called Anime XP, which is the spin-off, And the other two were actually called the, the Comic-Cons. And they took place in different parts of the city. So 
I had to travel around to go to these areas. So the first one was a three-day event. The, the second one was actually a two-day event. And the third one also a two-day event. But in the first one, I only went like for two days out of the three. In the second one, I went for two days in a row. And the third one, I only went for one day. But in general, it was mostly like a celebration of like anything based on anime and video games. And I even like got to meet a few, um, a few of the voice actors that went in there usually like these are spanish voice actors like latin american voice actors most of them are like national talents well occasionally they bring up like uh other talents from other countries particularly let's say mexico one example i can give you is that they brought in uh, the voice actress of uh, lena inverse in spanish uh i think her name is Heidi barbosa and she was even interviewed during the whole thing and she was a very, very optimistic, very charismatic, very sweet natured. I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed like, like being part of that whole Q and A panel when she was giving the introduction to how she started voice acting. It, it was really fun just to hear that. It's usually, like local talents here. Sometimes we have like talents that are uh, from Mexico directly because it has a sort of following in a way. The, the the voice actors here are usually known for, let's say, for example, there's one guy who did the voice of Edward Elric in Spanish. A full Metal Alchemist, uh, or or we had a, another one that did the voice of uh, Risa Hawkeye. Uh, we had other voice actors that come in directly from, from Mexico. Uh, there was one that came in that did the voice of Inuyasha, which is pretty neat. There was another one that did the did voices for uh, one of the characters for Saint Seiya. I recorded a lot of fun footage and even took photos with uh, a lot of interesting cosplays. There were some really good costumes that I've seen overall. Just seeing friends and just fans dress up as their favorite characters. Mostly, I, I do see like a particular pattern. I've seen people dress up as like characters from Card Capture Sakura. I saw some people dress up as uh, characters from Spy Cross Family. Seeing Mario characters cosplays is very common. Particularly the let's say Princess Peach or Rosalina. I saw one person dress up as Bowsette, believe it or not. Marvel characters. Some of them dress up as Thor, Captain Marvel, or Doctor Strange. Occasional people dressing up as, as Spider-Man based on the, the, the Spider-Verse movies. A lot of really interesting cosplays. I saw some people dress up as like these outstanding like um, Princess Zelda cosplays. One from like Tears of the Kingdom and the other one dressed up from A Link Between Worlds. Like those type of cosplays which were just amazing. I saw one guy dressed up as Marty McFly. There was this other guy dressed up as as uh, Michael Jackson. There was this one dude dressed up as Mike as Master Roshi. <laughs> he showed up randomly. There was this other other lady that was dressed up as uh, Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I occasionally saw some people dress up as like the uh, Queen of Hearts from the Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland uh, movie. Chainsaw Man cosplays. There was even some based on Avatar, like Avatar: The Last Airbender. Uh, of course, I met people dressed up as Barbie. There was also Barbie booths. We see a lot of Disney cosplayers. Of course, we have, let's say, Star Wars with their own booth. They have uh, the Trekkies with their own booth. To me, this is like the equivalent of going to Disneyland and seeing, let's say, your, your favorite Disney character, seeing someone dressed up as Buzz or Woody, or or seeing the Disney princesses all, uh, let's say, interacting with fans and all that. So it, it's kind of like that. Some people may not see it that way, but that is kind of like my personal Disneyland. And of course, they have that, that uh, food area, the snack area, which, I mean, they have a little bit of everything, technically. Be it sandwiches, pizzas, cheese sticks. Occasionally, we have Chinese and Japanese food, so they could actually, like, make it on the spot. Ramen or sushi or whatever. I, I checked out uh, most of the stands, most of the little booths that they had. Occasionally, we'd see booths based on anime, based on video games. Some booths got to be based on Star Wars. Others may be based on Star Trek. But for the ones that I saw in Anime XP... Mostly anime focused. Uh, there was also this little corner where they were uh, playing a lot of PS5 games, be it FIFA, Dragon Ball Fighters. They were playing Street Fighter VI. Uh, I think they were also playing Tekken 7. So a lot of things that were just getting uh, people's attention. Like in, in some booths, you could technically play, let's say, one round for free or so. And in another booth, you have to get, you have to like pay to to play maybe like ten bucks just to play for a round or play, let's say. Mario Kart and the Switch. That really depends on the providers overall. I had a blast playing Dragon Ball Fighters with uh, with random people, or playing Tekken Seven. I got some. I got a few kills here and there just playing Street Fighter Six with with Ken. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. There were also a lot of booths that were either selling, let's say, toys. that were selling um, comic books, manga, uh, illustrations. There were some booths that were actually selling, let's say, um, free Japanese classes, necklaces. It could be rings. It could be bracelets. Games here and there. Oh, and there were also some occasional, like, um, 
Smash Brothers contests, tournaments, if you will. I mean, I would have loved to participate in those tournaments, but I probably didn't have the, I didn't have the time for it. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to. And there's always like a segment where uh, we see either people like participating in tournaments, be it a uh, Smash Brothers tournament or a cosplay uh, contest. So what I, what I've noticed is that they keep changing the locale from time to time, and I kind of understand why. Because there was one locale in, in one mall that just felt like it was so cramped because there were just so many people that went in. And it was really hard to like navigate and try to go through places where they went to other locations which had more wide open spaces instead of just being like one floor stacked on top of another. It was a lot more accessible to go through and just walk around the place. I can understand why they made these changes. Usually the wider events are a lot better, a lot more comfortable and a lot more accessible to go to. In general, I've been having a blast just trying to record footage behind the scenes, enjoying my time there. I, I do want to share like some particular moments. Like in, in recent Comic Cons, I did bump into like some really good cosplays. And recently I found this um, this this girl dressed up as Top Bay Fawn from Avatar, The Last Airbender. And I mean, her, her outfit was so cool that it... I mean, she literally got the contact lenses just to make it look like she was actually blind. Right? So that's dedication to the character. So when I tried to get a, get her attention for a photo, I was literally doing this. Uh, I don't know if you could see me, but uh, I want to know if I could take a photo with you. And she, she eventually agreed, you know, I was just playing along with her uh, with her cosplay, being a character and all that. And I eventually took a photo and it was just a, a blast. And there was also another event where I um, I took a photo with this cosplayer of uh, that, that was doing a Zelda cosplay of... Uh, her, her interpretation of like the, the character from A Link Between Worlds. And of course, it's the same one that eventually appears in Smash Ultimate. I took a photo with her and eventually I even played Tekken 7 with her. And uh, she kind of kicked my ass playing Tekken 7. But you know what? It was worth it. I loved it. There was another event and this happened like in July. This was like in the second Comic-Con event. The, se the second anime convention. Where uh, I was just about to leave the convention. It was like roughly like uh, 650, 655 at that point. I was just about to, to head out. And while I was finding the exit, I eventually stumbled across this cosplayer who was uh, dressed up as a character from a very from a very obscure 90s anime. This anime is uh, Saber Marinette J. Of course, being an anime that takes place like in another planet where the human population is mostly male-oriented and women don't exactly exist. So we basically we basically see like their recreation of women through the form of robots that they call marionettes. But only a select few have this, this special circuit which actually has them expressing human emotions. That's just the basic gist of the anime. Uh, it's, it's a cult classic in Latin America. I don't know if anyone has ever seen it. Yes, there is an English dub. I think it's a Canadian dub. Back to the whole point. I found this cosplayer and she was dressed up as Lime. And Lime, in the anime, is this uh, robot girl with a very childish, energetic personality. And I saw her at the corner of my eye when I was just about to leave the place. And I literally ran to her and asked to see if I could take a photo with her because I, I remembered the anime. And this is, this is an anime I saw like in the early 2000s. My eyes were just beaming with joy just seeing someone actually dress up as this character because she is just a... the, the character is just a bundle of joy. She always like brightens everyone's day. So I eventually got that photo and I still cherish that photo to this day. Uh, this cosplayer also does like stuff from Avatar. Uh, I think she dressed up as like Kiyoshi. She has like uh, other friends dress up as let's say uh, Prince Zuko. So it's, uh, it's a lot of interesting stuff that it's been going around. And speaking of cosplayers, I went to the most recent Comic-Con and they had this guy called Taryn, spelled T-A-R-Y-N. And it's this uh, very popular model slash cosplayer who is uh, very popular on social media apparently. I've never really heard of him at the time, but I do give him credit for his uh, amazing looking cosplays. Given his, uh, his physique, his bodily build, always playing shonen characters, he's playing characters like from Jojo or, or One Piece. Not sure if he's uh, done characters based on Bleach, but I know that he's done characters based on uh, Tekken. And him being a model and then actually showing up to this convention here. This guy from Italy, by the way, showing up here to this convention. I mean, it's actually kind of impressive and people were like really hyped to see this guy in person. He did get like a, a, did a bit of a Q&A on stage. The post-show event where he was like signing autographs, the, the line was full. I couldn't go in. 
Well, that's pretty much about it uh, with all these uh, events with the Comic Cons. And I do hope to go on to uh, other Comic Cons later on, maybe next year. Really hard to say. But yeah, that's been something that I've been doing as a sort of like a side project, just uh, going out to these uh, comic conventions and just recording all this footage. It, it was just probably one of, the, one of my favorite moments of the year so far. Yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in another uh, video. Take care.